What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Affiliate Marketing Show. Please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest affiliate marketing news, tips, and trends. Per usual, I'm your host, one of your hosts, Josh from OfferVault.com, the industry's largest aggregator of all things affiliate marketing. If you need to find affiliate offers, affiliate networks, affiliate programs, and much, much more, please check out OfferVault.com. Once again, a big shout out goes to our special sponsor of this episode, Pinup Partners, and to stick with the theme and the brand. Today's chat GPT read will be done in the voice of a pirate. Get ready, guys. Ahoy there, me hearties. Gather round and lend an ear, for I bring ye tidings of treasure from the high seas of iGaming. Allow me to introduce ye to Pinup Partners, the finest affiliate program and direct advertiser of Pinup iGaming products. Are they be sailing through a vast ocean of geos from the distant shores of the CIS to the exotic lands of Asia and down to the lively ports of South America? No corner of the globe be too far for these swashbucklers. With pinup partners, you'll find detailed stats for each and every player, so ye can track your booty like the shrewdest of buccaneers. And with an average reg to debt rate of 33%, thanks to their easy registration funnel, local payment methods, and local licenses in select geos, ye be sure to see the doubloons rolling in. Set sail with pinup partners, and ye affiliates can earn more gold than ever before. So what be ye waiting for? Sign up today through the link in the description and let the plundering begin. Yo ho ho, and a fortune awaits with pinup partners. We also have Mr. Paper Call Adam Young, as well as the industry legend Harrison Gewurz, and a special friend of mine uh, from the industry, a legend within the industry, Adam Pivko, co-founder at Autumn DNA, a company that helps you feel better by diving deep into your genetic makeup and lifestyle to personalize vitamin regimens, as well as a growth strategist at Tierra Agency, your secret weapon for scalable, profitable online marketing. And it wouldn't be the affiliate marketing show if we didn't start off by talking shit about my intro. And I just want to say, Adam and Harrison, I did get a message from Pinup Partners today that said, we love what you're doing with the intros. We're thinking about extending our sponsorship. So with that in mind, what'd you think of the pirate today, guys? I like the pirate. You like the pirate? I liked it a lot. I couldn't help but listen and be enthused. And I got the message across and, I know what they do, so good job, man. Killed it. I think so, you should use more descriptive words in your prompt. For instance, yeah, yeah. an elderly pirate, or mm, a drunk okay. pirate, or yes. a pirate that accidentally fell into a pile of cocaine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good something one. Something <laughs> along the lines of that, maybe just take it one step further for pinup partners, but I, I actually enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's on the docket today, Adam, but the customized vitamins for people, I'm very curious. Um, So as a 40-year-old man, I'm starting to learn what happens when your body degrades. How do you guys customize these things? What are the things that you're solving with the customized vitamins? Like, What are the age ranges of your customers that you see like the biggest results from that they're the happiest like can you walk us through this yeah i'd be delighted and i'm super proud of this project i built it you know with an amazing co-founder and a really small team to to try to be different to try to enter the health and wellness space with an extreme level of integrity realistically we believe that what could make you healthy or what is currently your ailment or whatever is going on with you right now is a factor of two things, nature and nurture. And for us, we want to assess both of those. So for nature, we're doing a deep dive on your genetics. We do an at-home saliva collection kit, or you can even upload existing results from 23andMe or Ancestry.com to get started with us. And then on top of that, 
we do a lifestyle quiz that's really thorough. Uh, typically, we do it post-purchase uh, as you're getting set up and as you're waiting for your DNA kit or whatever. Um, and we take you through collecting, you know, anywhere from 60 to 120 questions, depending on how you answer or where you need additional support. But it looks, the lifestyle quiz looks at things like your diet, your habits, your current height, weight, uh, all sorts of different things. Um, and we combine that with genetics as well as some information about where you're located and seasonality, your age, all sorts of things like that in order to deliver a report that shows you exactly which vitamins, minerals, herbs, or supplements are, you know, you need the most attention for all the way through to where you're doing great. Then uh, we have a, you know, we do prepackaged pouches of morning and night uh, ready to go for exactly what you absolutely need from our report on a monthly subscription basis. I love that. So I'm curious, I recently had a blood test done and it went through all my levels. It was a, a decent sized panel. How does that type of blood test differ from a saliva test? Like what does the saliva tell you or would a blood test work too? Is just saliva is easier. Blood is a fantastic tool for when you're sick. That's the, the inherent belief um, from our team and from our research. It's an absolutely fantastic tool when you're sick. Now, alternatively, I suppose you could do blood testing every day, multiple times a day, every week, every month, whatever you want, if you have access to that type of thing and you love pricking yourself with a needle. But generally speaking, like what you ate or what you did yesterday could totally impact a blood test you take today. So instead of thinking about that, we think about genetics, which you're born with and doesn't change unless you're doing like gene altering therapy um, as the, the true blueprint for what your body's good at metabolizing, digesting, absorbing, uh, and how you react to certain things to ensure that we're providing you with exactly what your body actually needs, as opposed to what your body needs today or from yesterday's results, or however long it takes you to get your blood work results. Because things change so quickly in your blood, as opposed to your DNA that never changes. Just quickly, Adam, to your point, I will just speak for us. We are a pro needle podcast. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to make sure we could emphasize that. Um, I, but I, think uh, that I had three for breakfast and one more. Uh, we'll be coming shortly and then one before uh i go to bed tonight so today's a five needle day got it um, Same so yeah. builds character but i think i think what you mean is essentially <laughs> for like especially with like vitamin levels and stuff the levels are you could get the same without having to poke yourself um you can get the same kind of research or i guess like data yeah, out it, of it versus doing a blood test, which is not, definitely more of like a whole ordeal right yeah it's not about getting the levels it's less about that for us it's more about hey your body has an inability to store metabolize absorb vitamin d like you should probably depending on the certain situations but you should probably be taking larger doses of vitamin d that's just like a really simple example but before we even recommend vitamin d to somebody we're comparing it to like uh, for vitamin D specifically, I think we're looking at like 80 different SNPs. SNPs are single nucleotide polymorphisms. I don't want to nerd out here, but imagine your, your DNA is a book, a gene is a sentence, and a SNP is a letter in that sentence. So we're looking at like 60 to 80 different SNPs for vitamin D alone out of all the different vitamins, minerals, herbs, and supplements that we offer before we make that recommendation to you alongside of, of course, your lifestyle. So if you say, hey, I go outside, I work outside every day and I get, a, you know, I'm exposed to the sun and I never wear sunscreen. It's like, yeah, OK, you probably are doing pretty good in the vitamin D category. But the average, you know, 30 to 50 year old right now with how much screen time we all get and how hooked on blue light we are, <laughs> um, you know, chances are you're Very not true. Doing that. Does anyone yeah, else think Adam to is commenting too. on how white my leg is while living in Miami? Was this a passive aggressive push towards <laughs> buying his product and second question what what is the kit what is the initial kit cost and then like what is an ongoing vitamin program generally cost yeah 
Um, if you want to do the kit, uh, we typically sell it for $59.99, so 60 bucks. Um, the average DNA kit on the market is probably $150 to $700 I've seen. I've seen one test that was $700 for like 11 snips. We're doing $60 for 500 snips. So it's just like not even a comparison in terms of how precise and accurate we are. And for the ongoing monthly subscription, uh, the base package, which you know is exactly what you need, no add-ons or anything like that, uh, we're doing seventy nine ninety nine a month, and that includes typically, you know, depends on the person because again, it's super personalized. But you know, let's say on average we're dishing out eight vitamins, minerals, herbs, or supplements per day, so four in the morning, four at night in your pouches. So times thirty day supply, that's two hundred and forty pills for. $79.99. So Adam, Pivco, that is. Um, I'm curious, is Autumn DNA have an affiliate program or are they tied into this industry or was this kind of a project that you really wanted to focus on, you know, spreading your wings a bit outside of the affiliate space? Uh, no, like I, I definitely, you know, for all intents and purposes, it is a fully, wholly white hat, super clean brand. We don't get chargebacks or refunds or really anything of the sort. Um, but we do have an established affiliate program. It is up and running. Uh, it's a nice little additional revenue stream for the business. It's a great way to find new customers and we love supporting our affiliates. Yeah. Well, speaking of supporting affiliates, you know, when I reached out to you just a few days ago to uh, revisit what we were going to talk about today, I was really you know, pleasantly surprised by one of the first things you mentioned to me, which was basically like, don't expect affiliates to solve your marketing problem. I found that super interesting because I think a lot of people who are trying to make more sales want to get in the industry. They think, oh, I just need to open an affiliate program and get some affiliates and, you know, they're going to take care of all these issues I have. So I'd love for you to kind of dive into that mindset and why it's it's not fair to think that way like affiliates are just going to take care of all the marketing issues and sales issues you may have yeah i you know as part of like not only being at autumn and in a whole bunch of e-commerce communities and having been in the affiliate marketing space and being at an agency that supports affiliate marketing and paid media i get inundated with questions about hey uh, i'd like to start an affiliate program for my brand or whatever um, and more often than not, these brands are, you know, they don't have any money for paid media. They haven't tested or optimized their pages. They're struggling to acquire customers as it stands right now. And I think that that's just a terrible recipe to enter the space with. Like, you know, I, I probably say verbally out loud, don't expect affiliates to solve your marketing problems five times a week. So you know, I think that there definitely needs to, that awareness needs to be out there in the market. You know, it is this very small community, no matter how you think about it, this community is so small and to penetrate it in a way that delivers meaningful results above and beyond like a six to 8% additional revenue for your business means that you need to be really doing everything in your power to have a fire offer. If you want to just coast the the rails of affiliate marketing and have them try to solve your marketing problems, you're basically just losing bottom of funnel. You know, you're getting these coupon sites to steal a whole bunch of traffic from you. You have really low end um, content producers dropping things and hopefully they drive a sale or something like that. Like it's just really, really low. And if you don't have a fire offer, you're never, ever going to cross that six to eight percent you know, additional revenue for your business. But on the alternative side, hey, to get people really hyped about investing in marketing and actually solving a problem, like at the end of the day, affiliate marketing is still marketing. So if you don't have the chops, go get it. If you can't find it, hire an agency or do something. Or or worst case, worst case scenario, pull the old like internet marketing trick of R&D, which isn't research and development. It's just rob and fucking duplicate. So... <laughs> What any one of those That's options a is a is a better head start on on like getting an affiliate program off the ground to, to do meaningful meaningful results. And I've seen affiliate programs do like a hundred, a hundred and thirty percent additional revenue for a business. So, yeah, um, you know, I think so I think what you mentioned is really important because I'm sure all of us have had someone that's like, "Hey, my wife just created like." 
a blanket business. She's hand knitting these blankets. Can you help me get her sales with an affiliate program? And I'm like, I don't know any blanket marketers. I'm sorry. I, I don't know anyone that's really into promoting knit, knitted shawls. Like, no. <laughs> like, but people see like all these, they see it on social media. They see it everywhere. Like affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing. It's kind of like the people that pitch like the Amazon FBA businesses. Like we're going to automate this and you're going to sell a million dollars worth of shoelaces tomorrow. It's like, uh, don't think that's how it yeah, works. Like, it's like a I true misconception. Maybe it's just because I have been in the space long enough and I, and I operate with a higher level of integrity that I don't want to like say, Oh yeah. Like tell me all about your offer and let's bring it on. You know, or like, I know great networks for this and you throw it on, you know, some shitty one. Uh, but like at the same time, I, where that conversation starts to become a reality for a brand very quickly is when you start educating them about the only metric that should matter to affiliates, which is EPC. So like the second you say, here's why you don't expect affiliates to solve your marketing problems, because one, do you even understand, do you even know what the EPC of your offer is? And EPC for anybody listening who's unfamiliar is just earnings per click. And it's a really simple calculation. And also what's really cool about it is like, it's so simple and everything that's a factor in it is like in your control. So EPC for my definition is conversion rate times how much you pay when somebody buys, AKA they're going to send a thousand clicks. You're going to have X number of people convert and you're going to pay an X amount per conversion. So in the world of white hat e-commerce, I think you should be striving for somewhere over like a dollar 50 or even $2 as an EPC target. So you try to like back that out as a brand who sells at home made blankets um, and let's say they're 50 bucks. Great. So like what percent of people who visit your site end up buying? And they're like, okay, well, this is starting to, <laughs> like, shit starts to hit the fan really quick, really quick in their face when they're thinking about like the actual metrics here. But like in order to afford an, a decent affiliate program at that rate, like let's say you're converting 1%, like $2 divided by 1% is like, a crazy high CPA number that most people can't afford. <laughs> so it just uh, illuminates them right off the bat in terms of being like, oh, damn, I got a lot of work to do before I'm ready for affiliate traffic or even to be attractive to affiliates or even have enough of a baseline entry point that affiliates would be even willing to risk their money or their time to test your offer. Because that's ultimately what it's all about. It's getting somebody to test it. So with your health-related yeah. offer... Now that I've been listening to you run through sort of how it works, what exactly is your target demographic? I thought I had it, but then I realized it's probably not what I'm thinking. You know, it's a funny exercise. When you enter the world of personalization in particular, let alone that it's a health and wellness brand, but when you enter the world of personalization, it's it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and eh, you can service anybody and it's a curse and like eh, you can service anybody. So realistically, we've found a lot of success in like the 40 plus, uh, 40 to 55 demographic in a big way. Um, that audience is super receptive. Uh, they're, you know, generally like way more focused on longevity at that point. Uh, which vitamins and minerals and herbs and supplements are super, for, super important for achieving longevity. You know, when you're young and you're healthy and you think you're invincible, it's like, ah, do I, you know, I take, take some Flintstones. In fact, speaking of Flintstones vitamins really quickly, um, that was like one of our first ever ad campaigns. It was like still taking Flintstones vitamins, step out of the stone age with autumn DNA. Oh, I love that campaign. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's where we've been finding a lot of success, both male and female. It's almost like fifty-one, forty-nine percent, like really, really across the board. Interesting. It's funny you say that. I didn't really start paying attention to this until I was thirty-nine, going on forty. Bingo. So generally speaking, we are collecting quite a bit of data about our users not that we sell or monetize or do anything of the sort um but 
you know, it does give us a really good level of insight into what their real pain points are, what their what their real goals are, and so on and so forth, so that we can better and better and better and better optimize and speak to our ideal customer. What do you do with the data? Important. Because one of the biggest reasons, Nothing. well, hold on, hear me out here, and then I, I would like some more specifics. Uh, one of the biggest reasons I've never done anything like 23andMe is because I'm not willing to give up my genetic data because I just have seen what happens uh, over time. And so I'm <laughs> curious, like, do you have a deletion policy? You give the users their data? Like, like, how are you guys going about protecting your customers mm -hmm. in that regard? Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't come on here to plug Autumn, to be honest with you, but I'm happy to answer these questions. Well, bro, I this. happen to be, even though Josh didn't want to say it, one of the hosts of the show, and I think this is super <laughs> fascinating, and I do not endorse your product whatsoever. I've never used yeah. it, didn't know it existed until today, but I'm fascinated yeah. by it. So, like, this isn't Fair. a plug. He's not paying us. Like, I think it's a really cool product. I'm interested in it, and I think done correctly, it could be a huge affiliate campaign too. So like, I'm just working through my list of questions as what I would ask if I were an affiliate of your product. Sounds good, I'm happy to answer. The short answer is, uh, think about our business model. We sell vitamins, minerals, herbs, and supplements on a subscription. We don't need, you know, that's the thing about TNA. You don't need to take the test more than once. So companies like 23andMe and Ancestry, they got nothing else to sell you. What are they going to sell you? Access to more reports that they're coming out with? It's like, okay. Ancestry's cool. been trying to sell me. I fell for the scam. My grandma got it for me. And now I like regret giving the deep state my information. I'm full <laughs> conspiracy theory on this. I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's but, not even a conspiracy yeah, they, They're theory. like, it's do you want to like research your yeah. ancestors? And like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not, I don't um, care. So like, literally, yeah. they have nothing else to sell you. So instead... They have to monetize your data in some way. And in most cases, they're selling it to government entities and police forces and everything else. Insurance, that too, I data. think. I don't know. If it, I think that there's laws against insurance, frankly. But uh, definitely it's involved with higher level governmental organizations. Um, but on our side of things, first and foremost, we're looking at way less information than Ancestry and 23andMe. Like, they're probably looking at like 115,000 SNPs. We're looking at 500. We don't care if your eyes are blue or you're likely to have a unibrow. We care how you absorb, metabolize vitamins, minerals, herbs, and supplements. <laughs> so realistically speaking, our, uh, the information that we have uh, is not enough to uniquely identify you in a crime scene. It's not enough to you know, warrant uh, an insurance policy changing. Not to mention, it's not even like enough to sell. So that's not our business model. We're not a data. And that's company. what they tell you when they give you a cup of water at the police station, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sounds like drink this water. I'll account. take the trash out for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're capable of putting that into whatever type of test they want. For us, we we. True created our own chipset. So we're only looking, and that's why we're also capable of doing it super fast. Our results, once it arrives at our lab is four days, as opposed to 23andMe, which is like two and a half, three weeks. Wow. It's because we're, we're looking at less data. We don't care about the other stuff. It's irrelevant to us and to our needs and in terms of you know really personalizing with precision and ease somebody's personalized vitamin plan. So are you front-loading affiliate payouts uh, for like a flat CPA? Or are you doing some type of rev share? Like what's your affiliate model flat. look like? Flat. Yep, flat CPA. Higher than cost of consumer first month, typically. Yep. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So, or, so you mentioned you know, that you did not come model, on like, here. Sorry, sorry you, go ahead and then I'll ask my question. I was just going to say, the thing about this business model is like, if you think about it, when we get it right for somebody, they should remain for a very long time. Um, and they do. Like our, our lifetime value metrics, honestly, are, are super impressive. But like it all goes back to how good our science and technology is. Like it's really that simple. That's what we give all the credit to. It's not we're pulling tricks or anything like that to get somebody to stay longer. Well, it's funny too, like for your target demographic, I used to take a lot of supplements on a daily basis. 
And the reason I stopped isn't because I don't want to take the supplements or that I mind buying the supplements or that I care about any of it or that I don't like it or whatever. It's because I don't have the time or desire to sit there and pick pills out of 50 bottles and put them into day packs and go through that process. Like I literally couldn't do it anymore. It was I hated such going a to the store. I hated having to pick between all these different brands and read all these labels. It was just like, that was the worst for me. Not to mention is like, it got really confusing before I had this kind of extremely higher level knowledge about the industry. Like which magnesium should I take? I was told I should take magnesium. Somebody told me I should take magnesium. Like, I don't even know. There's like eight on the shelf here, not only of different brands, but of different types of different dosages of different everything. So all of that pulled into perspective for us. You know, that we built this for ourselves, first and foremost. Like my mother takes it. <laughs> I take it. Uh, so like, yeah, you know, to have it evolve into actually servicing other people was a delight. That's where we're at. So Adam, I want to revisit something you said uh, a little bit ago. Um, going back to near the beginning of this interview where the most important thing to have to fix your problems is a fire offer, right? So I'm curious in your opinion, like what makes a fire offer and what is the best way to structure an affiliate offer for someone who just opened an affiliate program or someone who's kind of looking to ramp things up a bit because they're not happy with where they're at? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to unpack in that question. And I, I think broadly speaking, you know, there's this cliche term in marketing where it's like the brands that can afford to pay the most to acquire a customer win. And although that may be true in particularly for the black hat world, it's, it's not the best answer. The best answer, in my opinion, is the brands that understand their customers the best and speak to them the best win. So, well, I think well, that's, that's the crap. same. I think that's the same answer. <laughs> Why? Because the brands that speak to their customers the best are able to afford the best traffic at the highest price because they convert it the best. But they also don't need to pay the highest traffic at the highest price because they're converting the best. That's the whole point of BPC. If you have a really high right. conversion rate, you don't need to pay the highest. As opposed to if you have a crap conversion rate, yeah, yeah you got to pay out the butt in order to make your EPC attractive. It's really just two levers that make EPC move. So yeah, you know, I think it starts with really crafting and focusing on conversion rate. And whether that's getting a landing page design or getting an audit from somebody and taking action or hiring a better copywriter or all of the above, uh, I think that that's where I would start if my if my offer was struggling uh, to attract affiliates or even convert with my own paid media efforts. I'd really start with the landing page kind of right before the purchase event um, and ensure that that's super dialed in. And if not, test a whole bunch of different things and find something that is. So often do I find brands, especially the ones that are like, it's not working. I want to start an affiliate program. Uh, so often do I find from them that they're like, you know, I, I look at their product description page standard Shopify style, let's say, and it's all like feature, 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 feature. And the first thing I'll say to them is like, you need to make this benefit, 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 benefit. I, you know, I subscribe to the cliche statements of like, people don't, you know, people, uh, what is it now? Um, people don't buy features, they buy benefits, they don't buy the, the drill, they buy the whole, like all those different types of cliche statements. So I'm really all about talking about the end result and the end benefit. And there's an awesome exercise that I absolutely love. I'll try to keep it short, but it's like the why behind the why. It's one of my favorite exercises to play with the client. I'll take any feature off the page and play the game with them. So like, I don't know what's on my desk. Sunglasses. Sunglasses are on my desk. So like, let's say they're UV light protecting, right? It's one of my simple, really go-to examples. Instead of saying UV light protection, it's like, why does somebody care that they're UV light protection? They care because they want to protect their eyes. Why do they want to protect their eyes? Because they want to enjoy going outside. Great. Enjoy going outside by protecting your eyes with our UV light protection glasses. Like that's so much better than UV light protection. 
So even simple things like copywriting on a page and speaking to your customers and understanding what your customers are actually desiring or testing what they're actually desiring is how you can make a, a way better converting offer and therefore have a more fire offer and therefore bring down you know CPAs to an affordable rate and still be really attractive to affiliates. It's that combination of things that can work in your favor. Now, at the same time, thinking about the CPA as a way to, um, you know, uh, thinking about like AOV or LTV to CPA, a lot of brands are just like, oh, I can't afford that. Like my average order value is $72. Uh, I can't afford a hundred dollar CPA. Okay. Well, what about thinking about CPA as not a cost per acquisition of revenue or average order value or a customer, but think about it as a cost per acquisition of data. Each customer that comes into your door and buys, like what if you said, hey, uh, we have a promo going right now where you could get, you know, refer a friend. Imagine one in five refers a friend. Great. You just dropped your CPA by 17 or 20 percent. Right off the bat, if one in five of these affiliate transactions refer to friend. Uh, on the other side of things, it's like, hey, um, if all the if you all you are is an AOV merchant and they never really come back to purchase anything, why don't you run affiliate offers of other people's to your client base and make a CPA right back? So like the options are kind of endless as soon as you start thinking about it in terms of data as opposed to, you know, just a CPA versus AOV or revenue. Um, and that's another way to like be able to legitimately inflate a CPA with maybe not the best converting offer and still be really attractive. I think so, to your point, well, a lot a lot of these brands or young brands, small brands, they don't realize how much work is involved to actually optimize an offer. And so the reason they go after an affiliate is like their internal marketing isn't generating what they want. So they're like, hey, let's start an affiliate program to solve this problem. And uh, we talk about this a lot on the show and just in general, Harrison and I talk to people about this all the time at trade shows and whatever. And um, we, we just repeat ourselves over and over again, which is essentially like you need to make a thousand creatives. You need to test a ton of different landing pages and like do it over and over and over and over and over again at every single stage throughout the funnel until you're able to achieve your target CPA. And if you can't do it yourself, expecting an affiliate to try and drive traffic into a funnel that's not working is is not going to yield great results either. I mean, a good example is the book that's sitting right here. We are on infomercial two, I think probably landing page 40, maybe offer three or four and creative 1500. You know, like we made a lot of progress. Things are going well. Like we have a shitload of work to do. Affy Award nominated book, I might say. And Adam yeah, Pitko. Welcome to the club. Yeah, I was going to say you're an Affy Award winner, as am I, as are Adam and Harrison. Um, Pretty sure everyone has one. Yeah, that might be true. But we love We you. might have more than one. I think we have, <laughs> Harrison, do we have more than I think we have. I think so. I don't even know. I don't count. I just know that the Affy Awards click up that plug. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> shout out. They shout need out to, to redesign it. I'm sorry, guys. I, a, I got the sweatshirt. The sweatshirt's nice. Adam Pivko. Adam and I, both of us didn't show up. Yeah, we know. We, well, we, we want to go. Did, but I'm talking about we know yeah, we, we know we just yeah, and, then show, and then they did well, show and then they did show no that's not fair josh we went to the dinner we didn't go to the party I... right but you did get your award in person that's all that matters right we got one of them <laughs> uh adam pivko would you agree that <laughs> when you zoom out a bit that an affiliate is an affiliate is an affiliate or do you feel like affiliates kind of break down into different oh totally break down yeah i think that there's two broad categories of affiliates you know on one side of the house is generally what i would refer to as like content producing affiliates to speak more specifically i would say that ranges from influencers to mommy blogs to magazine publications to coupon sites to where whatever uh a review site um all those different things are content producing affiliates and basically you know their ability to drive traffic is typically limited to their audience 
And what ends up happening is they'll do a post, they'll release an article, they'll do whatever. That day, you'll get a nice spike of transactions or traffic, at least. Um, and then the next day, it's going to be 50% of that. The next day, it's going to be 50% of that. And then just crickets. And that's ultimately what happens on the content producing side of things, as opposed to, you know, my, you know, where I definitely prefer to operate is on the media buying side of the affiliate world. So I would classify them into two sides, the content and media buyers. Now content are risking their time and audience and, you know, basically their expertise uh, of content production to drive you traffic as opposed to a media buying affiliate who's risking their time and money and media buying expertise to drive the traffic. They have a much higher skin in the game to find success. Now, they each have their pros and cons, but unless you're getting tons and tons and tons of content producing affiliates as an e-commerce brand or like a physical good brand, it's really hard to forecast inventory because it's so spiky um, of traffic and it's unpredictable. As opposed to working with media buying affiliates where when they sink their teeth into your offer, they have like this linear, consistent, if not exponential kind of growth because all they really have to do to send more traffic and be more successful is spend more money at that point. With, of course, some optimizations as, as you scale, things get a little bit, you know, there's that. But realistically, working, uh, my, my preference is absolutely to work with media buying affiliates. And in my experience, you don't even need that many. You need to like really stick handle like three to five to 10, like solid ones to make extreme moves on your revenue. So I'll generally classify them now. I think email is somewhere in the middle. I think it's, you know, because they're buying lists, they're driving traffic to build lists and they're producing content. So it's, they're somewhere in the middle, but um, generally speaking, I'd classify them into content and media buying affiliates. So you mentioned well, one, uh, one real one real scale affiliate that does media buying can change the outcome of an entire business. Of if course, the, the model works correctly. And I, I like that you, you mentioned email early in our careers, both Adam and I, I would say emailers were probably the largest affiliates out there. Um, you know, we had Scott Richter a couple of weeks ago on the show and like back, you know, early mid 2000s, I'd say you'd go to the shows and there were big media buyers for sure. But the guys that were like the largest affiliates were the emailers. I think it's funny to see kind of the seismic shift in the space because, you know, you as an, you know, you as the merchant, you probably do your own internal marketing you know, or email marketing, you, you know, you retarget, you email customers, you know, holiday deal, Black Friday special, you know, two for one deal. If you want to buy a friend, whatever it is, like you're doing marketing to your own internal data, but like the amount of companies that exist to solely just smash inboxes is I, I don't even know any of them. I'm sure there are a bunch, but I don't know who they are like I used to. Like Blue Sky was this massive company that just destroyed emails. And like I had never, you know, like I somehow came across some data. I gave them data on a rev share. This is like 15 years ago. Like someone owed me money from a biz op offer. They're like, hey, look, you can have all my partials. I'm like, okay. I gave them this data on a rev share and like, I got like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars checks for months, and like, I don't even think that's allowed anymore. You can't just like give someone your like here, dude, take it. And I'm like, here, dude, take it. Like, it's kind of funny to see the the regulatory oh, shift wow. and just the growth yeah, and like you know the social networks or wherever you're buying traffic. Like, the media buyers kind of took took hold, and now they run that shit. I still think that there's like this wild, wild west of the internet. Like, you can. Oh, of course, of the, stuff, the amount of stuff that I've seen. Uh, Spam so like, filters you know, are pretty I, good, though. I don't, I don't see like crazy garbage in my inbox like I used to. I, I think you're totally right about that. I think you are totally right. And there was also like, what in the past? I want to say like past six months, there was some pretty massive like email restriction changes on like, you know, how to verify your account and what type of like bounce rate. You know what percent are allowed to be labeled as spam and so on and so forth they're not really restrictive so i still think that there's good lists out there there's still people that like spend money and build their lists and sign up there's some really great like email newsletter publications that have all like teamed up and those lists commonly get hammered with offers so 
Now, there's ways to do it, um, and I think they're still really effective, but you know, it's hard to compete with spending money to drive traffic to a listicle as opposed to, this. yeah. You mean I can't copy and paste some HTML out of Cake and send 100 million emails this week and get paid? <laughs> I remember being like 16 years oh, old okay. and learning about email. And I called an affiliate manager of mine. This was back when Direct Track was like the software that everyone used. Mm. And I was like, hey, can't I just download all these suppression lists and like send emails? And they were like, Dude, do not do that. Do not do that. Please do not do that. Locks for sure. I never did it, but I, I just think it's a funny story because I, I didn't even understand the repercussions of doing something like that. Like I'll I'll be vulnerable for a minute. When I first started sending email in my parents' basement, I accidentally mixed a suppression list in with a production list while selecting in my ESP software. And yeah, things did not go well. They did they did not go well. There were a lot of complaints. I will say though, it was the highest interaction rate email I've ever sent. I was going to say sent. that shit probably inbox so good, dude. <laughs> it did, and like, people it. people actually bought. Like an, when my links were still working, I crushed it. We eventually we had to turn the links off, and it was you had a to whole burn thing. the server that sent those emails. <laughs> yeah, I no, I didn't that. get to keep the server or the IPs or anything. It was people. Yeah, it was a, a not a good mistake. <laughs> yeah. Like we operate with a suppression list as well. Like uh, on the biggest software, in my opinion, in the email game, Optismo. Shout out to them. Um, but uh, you know, I seed our suppression lists with like emails of my own, just to ensure that they're not getting pummeled. Um, it's definitely one of those tactics that I think is really important. So, Adam, I got one more question before for you before we let you get out of here. You know, I know you said you don't do anything with the data you get for Autumn. But in terms of like affiliate data that you can capitalize on, you know, what are some of your tips in terms of the best ways to maximize on the data your affiliate offer generates? Ooh, that's such a big list. Uh, is it possible to like share a list with your audience? As opposed yeah, to we can share. Email? We can share a link. But maybe uh, you want to give us like your top one or two. Um, or you could pass. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'll give you something like, again, I think it's different for each brand, like what's most important. Like for us, we always want to learn more about our customers. So like on affiliate traffic in particular, uh, we'll ask like a post-purchase survey. And I think that's just really meaningful insight that you can get two questions done uh, post-purchase. Like just, I think that level of insight and data is, is really important. Um, and not to mention, you can curate and like build out strategies and you can understand where your affiliates are having success and maybe you're not. And that could be a channel that you lean into to start testing yourself. So like learning from your affiliates based off the data that they're sending is, is a great tactic. Um, above and beyond that, like if we're thinking about like revenue driving tactics, um, you know, testing on that traffic source is also pretty interesting because it's not like they came through some type of like, not necessarily like a branded, you know, ability to comment on our ads kind of journey. So, you know, to throw another upsell at them or something of the sort um, to test out different additional products or new products or, you know, how high you can push that needle, uh, I think is a really great tactic to do on affiliate traffic, especially, you know, in the one click upsell kind of world that we operate in now. Well, Adam, Speaking on behalf of Adam and Harrison and myself, thank you for coming on the Affiliate Marketing Show. Big shout out to our amazing sponsor, Pinup Partners. For myself, Josh from OfferVault.com, Mr. Paper Call, Adam Young, the industry legend, Harrison Gewurz, as well as Adam Pivko, co-founder at Autumn DNA and growth strategist at Tierra Agency. Let's make that paper. Let's make that dough. This was the Affiliate Marketing Show. We will see you guys next time. Marketing show.